Botafogo beat Bragantino today at the Newton Santos Stadium by two goals to one. And what a performance by Junior Santos with two, two fantastic, sensational, wondrous, marvelous, whatever adjective you want to add in there. Because those goals, I, I was literally speechless. Could not find the words to describe the performance and specifically the two goals that Junior Santos scored tonight. Welcome to Glorious Botafogo, the only place on the internet that you will find news about the Alvaro Negro in English. If you're here, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment. What did you think of the match and who did you think was the man of the match? My vote goes to, of course, Junior Santos. It was a close game between the two clubs. Once again, the Botafogo supporters put in a, a sensational mosaic up in the stands uh, with the skull with the flames coming up, sort of like a kind of like a, a ghost rider type of style. I, I like that. Of course, it's not based on ghost rider, but it was very cool. Nonetheless, the match in itself was very back and forth, although Bragantino did not um, have a lot of shots on goal. Uh, and their goal came really from a mistake, a mistake that we have seen over and over again from, from Botafogo defense, where somebody forgets to mark somebody and it's a goal. Lack of communication, lack of awareness, lack of, uh, of understanding the situation and understanding what's at play. Junior Capixaba went up by himself, scored the goal. I don't really fault Gachito. I, I looked at the, at the goal and it was really Eduardo and Aute. Lucas Aute um, didn't really have a good first half. He improved in the second half. Uh, I just, I don't know. I, I don't know about Lucas Aute just yet. I don't know if he is the starter of that position, unlike Barbosa. Alexander Barbosa, to me, is a great signing for Botafogo. He, he puts up uh, leadership vibes. You know, you can see that he's he's a guy that's he's not there to to, to mess around. He's going to to command you know, and just his presence as a whole uh, is something that uh, we didn't have last season. Um, he really acts as a captain out there. I also thought that Damian Suarez had a great, great match for Botafogo until he lost and had to be substituted by Mateo Ponte there at the end of the match. Uh, Danilo Barbosa, when he came in in the second half, he had a, a great match. A fantastic little, small little dribbling. There was one, one in particular in the, mi in the middle of the pitch where he dribbled past two uh, uh, hedge bull players in, in a very tight space. Um, really using all his abilities and his dribbling skills to, to open up the space. Chiquinho Suarez, once again, I thought I thought he was pretty solid, uh, dragging defenders. And, and it was really uh, more of the side of Bragantino that did well to neutralize players like Eduardo and Savarino and even Chiquinho Suarez. Pedro Caixinha, which is Hedge Bull's coach, he came up with a really great plan to sort of neutralize all of the offensive weapons that Botafogo had, but he could not count on the amazing inspired night by Junior Santos. That first goal, Junior Santos' first goal, it is textbook Junior Santos trickery. He's gonna come in, he's gonna fake a shot, he's just, and then he's gonna fake a shot with the left, but go the opposite way, and then he strikes with the left foot. He did that last season, he did that this season, and again, he just did it again. He's got seven goals in three games. Seven goals in three games in the Libertadores. And he's now the top scorer for Botafogo in this competition of all time. Top scorer of all time, passing Jairzinho, where Jairzinho had five goals. Both teams will meet again next Wednesday in Baragança Paulista, home of Hedge Bull Bragantino. It's a smaller stadium, and Bragantino does not have a lot of supporters, so it's going to be a very interesting game, and it's going to be a game that Bragantino has to to take the initiative because they're now behind on the scoreboard, and this is where Botafogo can take really good advantage of the space that Bragantino is going to use, uh, leave behind, and Junior Santos and Savarino can take advantage of their speed to, to get behind a defense and score some goals 
hopefully early on. There are some transfer news. In the last video, I brought that there was maybe, maybe a chance that Abubakar would come and play for Botafogo. There was never really a chance for Vincent Abubakar to come in and play for the club. Instead, today, the club signed, announced the signing of Raul Stephens. He's a, a goalkeeper from Sport Club San Luis. They're from Rio Grande do Sul, a club from the, from the southern part of the country. And the goalkeeper's been really the best player on their team, keeping clean sheets. If it wasn't for the goalkeeper, they would have lost a lot of games instead of tying them up. And they even beat Grêmio earlier this year, two goals to nil, keeping a clean sheet. I saw some highlight reels, and he's seems like he's a good goalkeeper. He has trained with the Brazilian U20 uh, at the same time of Lucas Pehi, by the way. So him and Lucas Pehi actually um, trained together for the Brazilian national team U20. There was some rumors about Marlon Freitas leaving to Vasco da Gama. Botafogo denies any of all claims that Marlon, uh, Marlon Freitas will leave uh, at this transfer window. It doesn't seem like there was any sort of negotiations. There's a lot of back and forth saying, oh, yes, there was negotiations. Or yes, Vasco sent up an offer, a proposal. As of right now, for at least for this transfer window that is open for one more day, I think Marlon Freitas stays at Botafogo. Botafogo sent yet another 20 million euro bid, this time for Thiago Almada, the Argentinian that plays in the MLS for uh, Atlanta United. The Argentinian is 22 years old and he is number one in the MLS for uh, chances created and assists. So it's that is a very good sign, especially that Botafogo has uh, uh, an abundant amount of firepower up front with Chiquinho Suarez, with Junior Santos, with Luis Henrique, Jafinho. So bringing a guy that is known to, to put players in front of goal, that is a very good thing. John Tex just said that the world has noticed and there's players that are wondering about Botafogo's situation that wants to come play. And Thiago Almada, he thinks he can come here, play for one to two seasons uh, and, and almost triple the money, uh, double the money that he's going to pay for him and get that money back. And it's a way to keep Botafogo self-sufficient uh, when it comes to its finances. Uh, this bid about the Fogo place is for the second transfer window that's going to be happening in the middle of the year, not for the uh, for the end of this transfer window that is that closes tomorrow. So, if we are going to see Thiago Amada in Botafogo, it's not going to happen now, but instead in the middle of the year, just like Allah and Igor Jesus. But those two already have a contract signed. Botafogo is literally just waiting for their season to finish so they can come over to Botafogo and start playing for the club. That is all for today. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe. Leave a comment once again if you haven't yet. Who was the best player of tonight's match? Are you excited at the possibility of Thiago Amada? And you know anything about uh, how Stephens, the goalkeeper of the Botafogo, just signed? Botafogo will play once again this weekend for the Carioca Championship, uh, the Tasa Rio, which is a consolation tournament for those that didn't qualify for the state semi-final. Anyways, that is it. I'll be back again uh, this weekend and for sure the middle of next week with hopefully a qualification to the uh, group stage of the Libertadores.